All right, friends, we have not looked at this book in forever, and I really wanted to get it finished before the school year was out. We would have had it done if we'd still been in school. Um, I don't know about you, but I probably need a little refresh and what was going on. So we were on 44. Let me go back a couple of chapters and kind of flip through this. Um... Bradley was out sick the day before. Bradley got a gold star for his book report. Oh, Carla, the she was the counselor and she's leaving or she left. 41, let's go Bradley. His mother said on a Saturday morning as she entered his room, we're off to a real barber shop. She said as if it barber shop was the most wonderful place in the world. In the past, she had always cut Bradley's hair herself, but this time she had he had asked to go to a real barber shop. This that was earlier in the week when they were out buying birthday presents for Colleen. You make my head look like a chili bowl, he complained. Now sadly, he looked up at his mother and said, I don't want to get my hair cut. You want to look nice for Colleen's birthday party tomorrow, don't you? You don't want to look like a punk rocker. I am not going to her birthday party, he snapped. I hate her. Bradley's mother left him alone. That's right. He got invited to a birthday party that was a girl, and he was the only boy, I think, him and maybe the other kid. There was one, I think, two boys that got invited. <sighs> he heard Carla's voice in his mind. Saturday, I'm going to need someone to help me move all my things out of the office. I would appreciate it very much if you would come and help me. The knot in his stomach tightened. No, I hate you, he said out loud. His father knocked and then came into his room. Bradley, I think we need to talk, he said, man to man. Bradley stood up. Why don't you tell me what's bothering you? Maybe I can help. Well, Bradley didn't want any help. I was very sorry to hear that your counselor had been transferred to another school. I know how much you liked her. At first, I didn't like the idea of you seeing a counselor, but I have to get my hair cut, Bradley said. Mom said so. And he walked out of his room, leaving his father behind. His mother drove him to the barber shop. Carler's voice spoke in his mind. We could have had lunch together. We can have lunch together. We can go to a restaurant. The night not pulled tighter. Just the two of us and tighter. It will be lots of fun, said Carla, and it would be a great help to me. So he's thinking back in his head about what she had said about having him help her. Maybe I'll see you on Saturday, said Carla. I would like that very much and tighter. Well, you're not Cinderella, and I'm not Prince Charming, and tighter. I like you, Bradley. Can't, I can like you, can't I? You don't have to like me. Hmm. So that must have been him in his head thinking about all the stuff that Carla, the counselor, had said to him. The knot pulled so tight it broke. Stop the car, he shouted. I have to go back. The car swerved. Don't ever do that again, exclaimed his mother. We could have had an accident. I don't believe in accidents. I'm getting sick and tired of your nonsense, Bradley. What is your problem? can't get my hair cut now I have to go to school on well, Saturday I'm supposed to see my counselor she's waiting to see me call the school if you don't believe me but the car stopped in the parking lot in front of the barbershop we're here his mother said sternly you're getting your hair cut now he stepped out of the car and reluctantly followed his mother into the barbershop it smelled oily like hair and hair oil and stale bubble gum all mixed together all around him mirrors reflected mirrors the place was ugly and the mirrors reflected the ugliness multiplying it a hundred times back and forth they seemed to reflect the awful smell too he couldn't believe he'd asked his mother to take him to such a place it was some kind of horrible dungeon where kids went to be tortured but worst of all he had to wait his turn to be tortured all the barber chairs were occupied he sat on a torn red couch do you want to read a comic book asked his mother no, thank you, he asked quietly. Finally, it was his turn. He climbed into a slippery, oily, vinyl barber chair. The barber tied his shiny apron tightly around his neck, nearly choking him to death. The barber began by combing his hair. Bradley wondered why he had to comb it if he was going to cut it anyway. At last, the barber picked up the scissors and began to cut, but he never cut off a big piece of hair all at once. He kept snipping little bits of hair off the same piece of hair over and over again the whole time. Bradley had to stare at himself through a filmy mirror. He gritted his teeth and waited for it to be over. 
The barber put down the scissors, but then he picked up the comb and started combing again. I knew he shouldn't have combed it before, Bradley thought. Now he has to do it again. <laughs> the barber sprayed some kind of smelly junk on Bradley's head, combed his hair one last time, and then unhooked the apron around Bradley's neck. Bradley quickly hopped off the chair before the barber could change his mind. But the barber wasn't through. He made Bradley stand still while he ran a small vacuum cleaner across his neck. When he finished, he offered Bradley a piece of bubble gum. I hate gum, he said. He never used to hate gum, but after smelling it in that barber shop, he never wanted another piece again. You'll be the most handsome boy at Colleen's party, his mother said as they walked outside. Can you drive me to school, please? He asked. She nodded. Ten minutes later, he jumped out of the car, ran up the steps to the front door, and pulled on the double glass doors. They were locked. He pressed his face up against the glass and looked inside. Miss Kemp, the janitor, was waxing the floors. He pounded on the door until she looked up. Miss Kemp scowled at him and opened the door. What do you want, Chalkers? I have to see Car Miss Davis, he said. Miss Davis is gone. He ducked under her arm, which held open the door, and ran into the building. Chalkers, she shouted after him, I'll call the police. He opened the door to Carla's office and stepped inside. Except for the round table and chairs, the room was empty. But in his mind, he heard Carla say, Hello, Bradley. It's a pleasure to see you today. I appreciate your coming to see me. Tears rolled down his face. He noticed a large manila envelope lying on the table. He picked it up. Bradley Chalkers was written across it in big letters. Under that, in smaller letters, was the following. Mrs. Ebbles, class, room 12. Good friend, honest, thoughtful, caring, polite, whom I will never forget and who I hope will someday forgive me, last seat, last row. There you are, Miss Kemp said as she came in after him. If you don't get out of here right now, I'm going to call the police. Look, he exclaimed, holding up the envelopes. She left this for me. See, we were friends. Carla and me, we were the best friends. You have ten seconds to leave this building, Miss Kemp said. One, two. He took the envelope and he left. He opened it on the playground next to the monkey bars. Inside was the book, My Parents Didn't Steal an Envelope, an Elephant, by Uriah Lasso in a letter. Dear Bradley, this book was a present for me to you. It was a gift from the heart, and that kind of gift, for better or worse, can never be returned. I'm sorry for hurting you. I didn't mean to. If it makes you feel any better, you hurt me too. When you didn't come see me Friday or Saturday. I was hoping I'd see your happy face walk through the door. I hope you didn't mind that I gave your book to report to Mrs. Ebel. It was just too good to throw away. You can do such wonderful work. Now, if only you can learn how not to rip it up. I hope you went to Colleen's birthday party, and if you did, I'm sure you enjoyed it. If you didn't go, that's all right, too. There will be lots of other parties. You're a very likable person. You'll always be very special to me. It was a pleasure to see you. I appreciate your coming to see me. Thank you for sharing so much with me. I love you, Carla. Ooh. Bradley's father was leaning on his cane on the front stoop when Bradley came walking home. I want to talk to you, Bradley, he said, said sternly. Bradley ran to him and hugged him. Nearly knocked him over. 42. Bradley tried writing a letter to Carla. His father had suggested it. He crumpled up a piece of paper and threw it in his waste paper basket. He didn't know what to say to her. The words he wanted hadn't been invented yet. Ronnie hopped along singing, do to do to do the other animals. Oh, we're still doing the invisible friends, imaginary animal thing. <laughs> the other animals were taking another vote. We took another vote, the lion told Ronnie. We like you the best. I like all of you the best, too, said Ronnie. Bartholomew walked up to her. I love you, Ronnie. Will you marry me? Yes, said Ronnie. And I saved you from quicksand, said Bartholomew, so you didn't die. Well, that's good, said Ronnie. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> 43. We'll read this one and then stop for today. Colleen, wearing a new red dress, anxiously awaited for her guests to arrive. Everyone, ex excuse me, except for Lori and Melinda, she hadn't told anybody there would be boys at her party. The doorbell rang. Her heart jumped. She hoped it would be Jeff and also kind of hoped it wouldn't be. She composed herself and opened the door. It was Judy and Betty. They each gave her a present. Oh, what is it? Colleen asked as she took each gift, but of course they didn't tell her. Who else is coming? Asked Judy as the three girls sat and waited in the living room. Colleen counted on her fingers, naming her guests. Well, there's you two and Lori and Melinda, Karen, Amy, and Dina. She paused and then said the last two names very quickly. And Jeff and Bradley. Bradley? questioned Betty. Bradley Chalkers? Oh, no. Judy looked like she was about to faint. You didn't say there was going to be boys at this party. 
Didn't I? Colleen asked innocently. I thought I did. I don't think I'm allowed to go to a boy-girl party, said Judy. Okay, but you already gave me my present, said Colleen. They decided to stay. When the bell rang again, all three girls screamed that it was only Amy and Dina. Amy and Dina were dressed exactly alike, right down to the shoes and socks. I'm sure you guys used to do that when you were little. <laughs> they were the best friends, and their parents often took them shopping together. They always bought the same clothes, then before a party or even just before school sometimes. They'd call each other up and decide what to wear. Today it was a blue dress with white and yellow flowery things. <laughs> Colleen invited boys, Betty told them. Bradley Chalker, said Judy. Amy and Dina looked at each other in horror. Colleen took their presents from them before they could change their minds. <laughs> Both presents were wrapped in the same purple and green paper. Karen was the next to arrive. Colleen invited boys, everyone said to her as she stood in the doorway. Her mouth dropped open. Bradley Chalker, said Betty. And the new kid, said Amy. Jeff Fish Food. Karen was very shy and quiet. If there was going to be boys at this party, she might not say one word all day. The doorbell rang. Everyone except Karen screamed. She held a pillow in front of her face. It was Lori and Melinda. What do you think they said this time? Colleen invited boys. Everyone greeted them. Jeff Fishnose and Bradley Chalker said Dina. So we already knew that, Lori said, as if it was no big deal to her. <laughs> oh, well, nobody else did, said Judy. Eight girls waited. They talked and laughed about how much Colleen would like her presents. They asked her what she, what there would be to eat and what games they would play. The one thing they didn't talk about, though, was the boys. Though it was the only thing on each of their minds. When Colleen and Dina, when Colleen told Dina there would be a three-legged race, the room turned very quiet. Each girl wondered if she would have to run with a boy. Colleen planned to run the three-legged race with Jeff. It didn't occur to her that if she was partners with Jeff, another girl would have to be partners with Bradley. But it was starting to get late. A new worry slowly crept into each girl's head. What if the boys didn't show up? It suddenly seemed that the party wouldn't be any fun at all without boys. Where were they? Colleen's mother walked into the living room and counted heads. Eight, she said. Who's missing? Nobody answered. Oh, the boys, said Colleen's mother. Well, we can't wait too much longer. Colleen looked like she was about to cry. Where were they? Oh, sounds like she actually wants them to be there. All right, we'll pick this up next time.